Westminster Abbey of the East, St. Mary's Church, Fort St. George, Chennai. Presented by Holidays on Shoestrings. Quickly scramble past the assembly building in Fort St. George and you will find a quiet corner surrounded by tall neem trees with dangling creepers and a metal gate with an antique lamp at the top. This is the beautiful entrance to what is claimed to be the oldest Anglican church east of the Suez Canal. Popularly known as Westminster Abbey of the East, St. Mary's Church is a history book in itself and every step inside seems like a step back in time. Built in 1680, when those who lived in the fort needed a place of worship. The outside walls are four feet thick as a security against attack by cannons. Again, the roof is built entirely of bricks in three semicircular masses of solid sloping masonry so that in case of a cannon landing on top, it will roll down causing minimum damage to the roof. No wood was used in the building except for doors and windows to avoid the place being gutted in case of a fire. So we can in fact say it doubled knowingly or unknowingly as a bomb shelter. The British Army also stopped its artillery here. The other side of the church is a yard which has some beautiful gardens. Surrounding the church are 104 gravestones with an interesting history. The original graveyard was situated where the High Court is now, but was shifted later because when the French besieged Madras and took over the building, they used the slabs for mounting cannons. So, for security reasons, most of the slabs were brought and laid around the fort. But, ironically, in 1782, when Hyderali invaded Madras, the slabs were again used by him to mount the guns around the fort. They were moved yet again, and this time, brought to St. Mary's Church, many were broken and the remaining 104 tombstones used to lay a pavement around the church. Some of them even dating back to the late 16th century. The elegant staircase that lies between the church and the steeple actually leads directly to the gallery where the governor used to sit so he did not have to mix with the hoi poi when entering the church. If the exterior and the yard of St. Mary's are not attractions enough, the interior is a treasure house of memorabilia. Any historian of the Raj can spend a lifetime just going over the gravestone, the memorial tablets and other artifacts in the church. It is also fascinating for the lay visitor, for setting foot inside is to be transported to another era. Time appears to have remained unchanged inside St. Mary's. Above lies the governor's gallery, the intricately carved teak balustrade in front of the gallery dates back to the time when the church was built. The building consists of a nave and two aisles, with the nave protruding about 12 feet further than the aisles, thus forming the sanctuary. Behind the altar is a painting of the Last Supper. The church has become synonymous with this painting, whose artist is unknown, and came from Pondicherry in 1761. The first organ was installed in 1687 and the present one, which is the fifth, dates back to 1894. The registers of baptism, marriage, death and burial have been preserved right from the time the church was consecrated. While the oldest are preserved in the Fort Museum, the rest lies in the church. The register of graves from 1680 to 1947 can be seen at the church. The first marriage register is that of Yelu Yale, 
after whom Yale University was named. Robert Clive was also married here. The visitor's book dates back to 1903 and has autographs of King George V and his Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth II and the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Charles and Prince Andrew. Some plates and chalices that were presented by Yellow Yale when he was governor of Madras, a large silver basin, silver flagon and communion cup are on display at the museum. I guess a lot of Madras's history took shape here since this was where the East India Company began its operations. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and tell your friends about it.